Well, for those of you out there who love Star Wars, and that's pretty much everyone, am I right? You're familiar with Darth Vader, but how much do you really know about his iconic suit? You have learned much, young one. What is thy bidding, my master? The top 10 things you didn't know about Darth Vader's suit. Rich, are you ready to talk about Darth Vader's suit? Yes, I am. I am more than ready to talk about Darth Vader's suit. For the longest time, I thought it was just something some costume designer slapped together in the 1970s from Ralph McQuarrie's drawings. But it turns out there's a lot more we didn't know. Are you saying that every one of these buttons has a specific function that was intended by George Lucas? You're god right. Wow. I didn't know that. Clickbait. Number one. Following his near-fatal duel with Obi-Wan Kenobi on Mustafar in 19 BBY, Darth Vader received a mobile life support system encased in a suit of distinctive black armor. Okay. Darth Vader's armor, serial number E-3778Q-1. Wait, it has a serial number? Yeah was designed to maintain and protect the young Sith apprentice's charred body while exuding an air of intimidation and control. His suit followed an ancient Sith tradition in which the warriors of the dark side of the force would adorn themselves in heavy armor. The suit's construction incorporated Sith alchemy to augment Vader's severely diminished physical strength and vitality. The suit provided a suite of life support systems and gave Vader relatively free movement without having to use a hover chair. I guess that's like a wheelchair. Uh, yeah, yeah. The suit was finally irreparably broken in 4 ABY when Vader absorbed Emperor Palpatine's powerful force lightning in his face. <laughs> absorbing his <laughs> Number two. Like traditional Sith armor and formed after ancient Sith droids, Darth Vader's suit was made to be both intimidating and fearsome. His helmet was black with a highly polished finish from Wudu hide. <laughs> a Wudu hide? The helmet had a raised ridge that ran from between his eyes to the back of his head, where it merged into durasteel, obsidian, and plastisteel. What's plastisteel? It's steel with plastic? Plastisteel. That means it looks like cheap plastic made in 1977, but <laughs> it, it has the durability of steel. Two less jagged ridges swept curving over the eyes of Vader's mask proper and served to accent them. The jagged edges also acted as a means to deflect potential energy blows onto the thick shoulder armor. <laughs> That's what that means. <laughs> Can you do it? The armor also came in 10 layers, each subdivided into three primary layers. The first primary layer was a self-sealing surface similar in function to standard MNAT suit worn by most Imperial officers. The outermost layer was a black insulating shell, and the inner layer was an Andwa gel crystal matrix. The second primary layer dealt with impact protection from physical shock due to the irreversible damage to the torso. The second layer was some ortho fabric. I guess it was a some ortho fabric. Well, some. We don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> we, know, we know the other things for sure. We have the documents. It was just some ortho fabric. <laughs> Number three. The helmet locked into the mask via a pressurized seal comparable in integrity to a Class C spacesuit. A uh, Class C. I not good enough for a Class no, C. Huh? No, no. Besides protection, it also stuck needles into Vader's skin when fixed in place, which fed neurological data on brainwave activity to the central chest computer. <laughs> the mask's appearance was given a similar appearance to a skull in order to enhance the fear factor of the Dark Lord of the Sith. Components for disassembled Soro sub DH-57 comlinks were also built into the mask's interior as a result of it being a cheaper solution compared to a custom designed new unit. Of course. They were concerned about costs. <laughs> it was also equipped with audio enhancers and sonic dampeners, the latter of which were also capable of reducing noise as a defense against sonic weapons. 
and they can extend Vader's hearing range to 40 kilohertz, enough to be higher than a Ronto. <laughs> I guess a Ronto is a creature that can hear really well. This, like a dog? That means something to somebody. It also came equipped with a voice synthesizer, which upon picking up the electronic sounds from a built-in vocoder, translates Vader's otherwise weak speech to be audible, and also added a timber, bass, and amplification to sound like an elderly black man to produce an impressive <laughs> amount of vocal quality. The collar along with the chest armor were also lined with electrodes that fed information status of the suit's performance during monthly maintenance sessions at M. Pal Su Recon. The collar was also equipped with feeding straws that allowed Vader to feed himself from an implanted bladder filled with rep mud vita paste. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I love that rep med vita paste. <laughs> On his hands he wore black gloves, the right glove being a Mandalorian crush gaunt, fitted around one of Lord Khan's indestructible Sith amulets. <laughs> and modified to include grip augmentation circuitry. The gloves, or more accurately gauntlets, were also made of micronized Mandalorian iron weave to protect <laughs> Vader against glancing lightsaber blows during the patient's physical therapy sparring sessions. <laughs> I'm trying to picture what that looked like. I'm, I'm picturing him holding on to one of those railings. With the, He's got one hand on a walker and the other on <laughs> a lightsaber. Number four. There were also two shafts located on the left and right control box, acting as life function sensor arrays. The data slots accepted RepMed data wafers, <laughs> 1X44A and 1X44AX, both kinds of data wafers, <laughs> acting as the life function sensor arrays. His belt, which went over his tabard, was also mostly black. It had three metal the boxes around the front. Electromagnetic class. The other two boxes that included the red system activators, two green buttons, buttons for two green buttons adjustment, composing of and a reset auto manual switch, toggle, right, containing two green and buttons that had the same purpose as the green buttons of the respiratory vent, control. The heat vent below the, the green buttons is a system activator, so indicator spare button, energy cells in case of emergencies, as well as a backup comm link, a toolkit for stability repairs. What, uh, what? 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 His nervous system sustained the least amount of damage from his injuries at Mustafar. Nonetheless, it was implanted with sensor webs, tracing activity running through his cerebellum along his spinal cord to the sensory and motor neurons so it could be constantly and closely monitored. As such, if his neurons were ever unable to communicate with his metallic prosthetics, Vader would be rendered immobile and a programmed alert would go out to Empal Surikon via hyperwave signal. Basically, they're saying if Vader fell down the stairs, his life alert would go off. <laughs> <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. Help me, help me, I've fallen to the dark side and I can't get up. Exactly. Number five. Nearly a decade before his death, the Sith Lord Darth Plagueis and his apprentice Darth Sidious committed an act that directly violated the nature of the Force. To advance their plan for galactic domination, the two Sith attempted to will a being of their own design into existence, pouring their abhorrent intent into waves through the Force to the countless midichlorians that were spread throughout the galaxy. The experiment failed, however, and the midichlorians, not willing to obey, not only frustrated <laughs> Plague's attempts, but countered in reprisal, conceiving a child with some lady named Shmi Skywalker. So basically what they're saying is Darth Plagueis and Darth Sidious shot their <laughs> out all over the galaxy. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. They tried to impregnate spirituality itself with their evil. <laughs> 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 They essentially raped God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like really, <laughs> really wrong. <laughs> Number six. So Palpatine finds Vader's ravaged body after he's 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 uh, defeated by Obi Wan Kenobi on Mustafar. Mm -hmm. We all remember these exciting events. This is a great sword fight. 
Darth Sidious, newly declared Emperor of the Galactic Empire, soon arrived and snatched what remained of Vader's body from the bank of the Lava River, placing him on a medical capsule and willing him to live. You remember this? Yeah, I remember this. He then took Vader back to Coruscant, repairing the damage to Vader's body through intensive cybernetic enhancements, with the help from arcane Sith healing techniques. At the newly renamed Emperor Palpatine Surgical <laughs> Reconstruction Center. Emperor <laughs> Palpatine Surgical Reconstruction Center. <laughs> That's because it's the first thing you're gonna do. When you <laughs> take over. This hospital after me. <laughs> then we'll get to Lord Vader. That just makes me like Emperor Palpatine even more. <laughs> I just want to see what the sign looks like. <laughs> Does he have like his picture on the sign too? <laughs> Smiling, smiling with his monster face. And there's a statue of him in the lobby going. <laughs> <laughs> With two adoring children looking up at it. <laughs> he was repaired and rebuilt over a period of several days by a hyper sophisticated Ubrickian prototype DD 13 medical assistant <laughs> droid named DD 13 slash HK, a 21B surgical droid by the name of 21B slash DRX, and an enhanced FX6 medical assistant droid. The Uberkian Galactic Chopper, DD-13 slash HK, oversaw the installation of cybernetic implants, prosthetic limbs, and synthetic organs. Vader's eyes, Vader's vocal cords, scalp, face, arms, legs, lungs, head, neck, buttocks, but especially lungs. Yeah, yeah. The surgery was also less than pleasant. 21B slash DRX deliberately did not perform reconstructive cosmetic surgery to Vader's face, as it would be hidden behind a mask. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sure Vader appreciated that. I'm sure. Hey, it was called the, the Emperor Palpatine <laughs> Surgical Reconstruction Center. Not Plastic Surgery Center. Okay. Emperor, think... Emperor Palpatine doesn't want you to be as pretty as, as he is. Budgetary limitations and lack of effective equipment imposed by the Emperor also acted as a factor to shoddy attempts and repairs. Vader didn't rebel. 21B slash DRX likewise ordered for Vader's helmet to be waxed with voodoo hide in, in the hopes of that the resulting shine would distract Palpatine from Vader's shortcuts that they were forced to implement during the surgery. <laughs> what? Make his helmet shiny. But we were be no, 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 the medical droid made his helmet shiny to distract Palpatine. Oh my god. What? Let's read that again. Yeah. 21B, <laughs> DRX likewise ordered for Vader's helmet to be waxed with voodoo hide in the hopes that the resulting shine would distract Palpatine from the shortcuts that they were forced to implement during the surgery. Oh wait. This is from the, the distract Emperor Palpatine from the shortcuts they were taking. They were taking shortcuts because of the budgetary limitations. So Imposed by Palpatine in the Palpatine Reconstructive Surgery Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> There's a brilliant story going on there. Number seven. During the first few months of living in the suit, Vader felt trapped within it. But after a short while, he had learned to use it for both intimidation and isolation. On one occasion, early on in Vader's career as a Sith, Palpatine threatened to use force lightning against him when Vader <laughs> expressed displeasure with a dressing down Palpatine was giving him. Palpatine revealed on that occasion that he was well aware that the delicate circuitry that allowed Vader's life support systems to function were vulnerable to electrical discharges. <laughs> Vader would later outfit his armor with electrical insulation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just amused with like the Emperor threatening Vader like a child, I use my electric bolts on you. You know, I could short out your life support system. <laughs> How did he do that without Palpatine finding out about it? That's my question. I don't know. This document doesn't, doesn't yeah, answer that. I'm sure there's a paragraph in there somewhere explaining who the contractor was. <laughs> Vader hired Umla Gumagog, the, 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 
<laughs> the notorious uh, hot insulation manufacturer <laughs> to give him lightning proof insulation in his suit. This was done 13 years BBA. <laughs> Did you write this? <laughs> I wrote everything in there. There were many problems with his armor. The synth skin that substituted for what was seared from his bones itched incessantly and his body needed to be periodically cleansed and scrubbed of necrotic flesh. Oh, nice. <laughs> <That sucks. laughs> and the incessant rasp of his breathing interfered with his ability to rest, let alone sleep. In rare moments it came to him, Vader's sleep was a nightmarish jumble of twisted reoccurring memories that unfolded into excruciating sounds. Memories of like Jar Jar Binks and working on their pod. <laughs> Spinning, that's a good trick. <laughs> Keep me up at night, too. And when he attempted to rest, his cybernetic limbs strained against his ruined flesh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got the same problem. <laughs> Worse, the implanted sensors lacked sufficient discrimination so that too many ambient sounds were picked up and their distance and direction were difficult to determine. Sometimes the sensors needled him with feedback or attached <laughs> echo or vibrato <laughs> effects to even the faintest noise. <laughs> I just fucking kill myself at that point. <laughs> the pectoral armor that protected the artificial lung weighed down on him, as did the electrode studded collar that supported the oversized helmet. The delicate systems of the mask his and oversized he, heavy helmet. I guess he had to sleep in it. Maybe this was before his chamber. That's what you get for joining the Monster Mash. <laughs> <laughs> Pledging your loyalty to the Monster Mash. <laughs> and the ragged scars in his hairless scalp, which owed as much to what he had endured on Mustafar as to attempts at emergency transplants of hair follicles during his trip back to Coruscant. <laughs> I guess the droids tried to give him hair. <laughs> the weighty cloak and pectoral plating so restricted his movements that he had difficulty lifting his arms over his head, only doing so when necessary. Such like, as when, like when he had to throw Emperor Palpatine into a pit. Number eight. The monitoring panel beeped frequently and for no reason. The light seeming to... <laughs> The light seeming to serve as only a steady reminder of his vulnerability. It was designed to annoy him. Uh, yeah, I think so. His electrical <laughs> systems were woefully delicate, and, w and he was forced to protect his vital, vital chest panel while dueling. The system was so vulnerable that Antoninus Tremaine was once able to deactivate Vader's entire suit by pressing one button on his chest control panel. Oh, if only Luke knew that. You have learned much, young one. I'm just, I'm just picturing Emperor Palpatine, like, talking to the suit designer. <laughs> I, I, want a, I, want a, I want a button on his control panel that just beeps every now and then. Keeps him from sleeping. Just, just to annoy him. <laughs> Can we put an alarm clock inside of his helmet? Can it close off in 15 minutes? Every, every two hours, I want him not to be able to breathe. <laughs> Just for a minute. Just for a minute. That way he won't ever want to leave me. <laughs> Instead of using Durasteel for his leg prosthesis, the medical droids had substituted an inferior alloy and had failed to inspect the strips that protected the electromotive lines. Durabronze. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> As a result, the inner lining of the pressurized bodysuit was continually snagging on places where the strips were anchored to the knee and ankle joints. Additionally, the tall boots were a poor fit for his artificial feet. <laughs> I can't even, the man can't even get shoes that fit! The guy can't get to breath! <laughs> <laughs> These devices made it even more difficult for him to move with ease, much less any grace. Raised on the heel, the cumbersome footwear canted him slightly forward, forcing him to move with exaggerated caution, lest he stumble or topple over. <laughs> do you think that happened often? And what do you, how do you react if you're like the stormtrooper that's in the hallway when, when Darth Vader falls on his face in front of you? <laughs> <laughs> oh! 
<laughs> or falls down the stairs. Oh, oh no! Clunk, 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 clunk. Oh! <laughs> Worse, they were so heavy they often felt rooted to the ground or as if he was moving with high gravity. He even felt he needed to use the force to move. <laughs> Number nine. As of zero BBY, I think that's a year. Oh, okay. That's like a star date, maybe. Vader was given an opportunity to have a new suit built for him. The suit would have been far more advanced, technologically superior, and much more comfortable than his original. However, due to budgetary restraints, <laughs> Vader would have to have his prosthetics. <laughs> and his life support took <laughs> <laughs> and number 10. Despite how cumbersome it was, the suit did provide Vader with a number of benefits. <laughs> Get the oh, money. I, but the first. He's a man stuck in a giant coffin. <laughs> 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 The first and most obvious was that the suit functioned very well in its role as armor, providing Vader with extraordinary amount of durability, allowing him to shrug off otherwise fatal damage or injuries. So he can't move, he's in constant pain, and he's constantly getting shot. So, oh, I want to die. Pew, pew, pew. Remember, this was designed to deflect a laser blast down to his chest armor. You can't shoot me in the head, it'll just deflect. Also, don't shoot me here. They put it right here. Why not put it in the back? Put it right here. Oh no, they shot me on my computer, now it's beeping more! Now it's I'm not gonna sleep tonight! <laughs> now it's beeping every four seconds! Now it's beeping! <laughs> the shoulder armor itself weighed 12.2 kilograms overall, was resistant to both blasters and energy blades. A drawback, however, is that its weight made it difficult for Vader to raise his lightsaber to full height. That's his style. That's the Umagu lightsaber style, which favors heavy, strong, slow attacks. Umagu? No, Umagu. Is it, was that a real word? Is that on Wikipedia? I, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. I'm sure there's a name for it. Usu Kai Ken. I'm gonna say it's Usu Kai Ken style. Ooh. Yeah, because that sounds sounds Japanesey. Usu Kai Ken. And that sounds like karate. Usu Kai Ken was the, the the famous Jedi warlord who. Uh, he had he had uh, an, an injury that that he couldn't move his elbows as fast, oh. so he had to do he had to hold his arms out straight and slowly oh. swing the saber. Uh, Usukai Ken also died shortly after inventing the style. <laughs> well, yes, okay. yes. Impressive. Well, Rich, have you learned anything that you didn't know about Darth Vader's suit? What what I've learned today is that. At the end of Jedi, when Darth Vader says it's too late for me now, take my mask off, he was lying. He just wanted to die. I I can understand. Oh no! Oh! skin and organs. Oh no, I have to do stairs again. <laughs> oh, fuck! Oh, I've fallen and I can't get up. I've fallen and I can't get up! 